Philippe Padou was an insatiable modern-day Casanova who could boast of countless sexual conquests. He would meet women and uh, they would fall in love with him pretty quickly. Among them, Diane Reeve. Mm, it wasn't love at first sight, I don't think, but it was, like I say, it was a little exotic. But Diane would learn to her horror, it was almost a love affair to die for. And a landmark case that gives new meaning to the charge of assault with a deadly weapon. Which was his HIV infected semen. Now, in a jaw-dropping prison interview with Crime Watch Daily, Padue actually alleges it was Diane who gave him the dreaded disease. She's guilty of sin. And the unrepentant Lothario unleashes still more venom at Diane and five other women he was found guilty of recklessly infecting during unprotected sex. I wish they, they burn in hell, basically, and Diane especially. Diane was a lonely Dallas divorcee with grown children when she met Padue on an online dating site. He was French, he was tall, dark, and handsome. And the native Parisian, also divorced with grown children, had all the bells and whistles. He drove a Corvette, he was charming, he was soft-spoken, uh, very polite, very well-mannered. He won you over very quickly. He didn't waste any time. He seemed to have this aura about him. He had a very uh, magnetic personality. Padu was also a rich and successful data security analyst, and he and Diane had something special in common. They were both martial arts experts, which seemed like kismet to Diane. That was one of the ways that we connected. How long did it take you to become a couple? Not too terribly long. I'd say less than four months, and we had the exclusivity talk. So you were exclusive? He told me that we were exclusive. A love-struck Diane thought she had found an exciting Mr. Wright. It was a great time for me. I liked to travel. I needed somebody to travel with. He liked to travel too, and we went lots and lots of places. We were on the road all the time. And you two were really traveling the world. We were, we were. We had been to Paris and Rome and all kinds of different places. But then, when Padue asked her to help find him some travel documents, Diane stumbled upon something else, the proverbial little black book. It was black. It was black. And it was filled. And it was filled with lots of women's names. Diane started calling the numbers and discovered to her horror that Padue had been living a secret other life of rampant infidelity. There were allegedly a lot of women. Well, allegedly is a relative word because I talked to most of them, so it wasn't just allegedly, I knew. You knew, uh, he had other girlfriends. Yeah. Girlfriends, one night stands, you know, people that he would meet, this, that, and the other place, it doesn't matter. One of the women she spoke to actually thought she had an exclusive, serious relationship with Padue, just like Diane. She said, you're his girlfriend. I'm his girlfriend. And I went, uh-oh. No kidding. I didn't say no kidding, but you know, that's what we say on television when we can't say what I really said. What did you talk about? We both talked about being conned because he had a story for me, he had a story for her. Do you approach him and say, I met your girlfriend? I did. And what was his reaction? I didn't give him much of an opportunity really to react. I didn't really care what his explanation was. What I wanted to do was establish that that wasn't okay and we're not gonna do that anymore. And what did he say? He kind of looked at me and kind of gulped. Diane foolishly forgave Padue. Was that a tough decision? It was because, you know, that's not something that any woman wants to have to deal with. I had been without a significant other in my life for two years before I found Philippe. And I didn't want to let go of that. You think, look, I've already put all this time and effort into this relationship, and if I bail out now, I've just lost everything. Diane and Padu even discussed moving in together. Things are moving forward. Things are moving forward. Or so she initially thought. Was he still cheating on you then? I found out later that he was. With whom? 
Well, you know, how, how much time do you have? <laughs> Diane would accidentally learn Purdue had never stopped cheating on her when he told her he was too ill to go to her daughter's wedding. Something told me I needed to just check on him and see how he was feeling. And when I pulled into his driveway, the house was dark and nobody was home. So I sat and I waited and I cried. And when he finally arrived home, all hell broke loose. We even had a, I'm embarrassed to say, a gratuitous car chase scene. Because he saw me in the driveway and didn't stop, kept going, and I thought, oh no. Did you find him? I did. And we did have a screaming match. I knew it was over, he knew it was over. That was the end of it? That was it. But Purdue had left Diane with a surprise parting gift. So you go to the doctor mm -hmm. and they say, well, we have a little bit of bad news for you. After more than four years together, Diane Reeve has finally said au revoir to her cheating French boyfriend, Philippe Padoue. But the serial Casanova has left Diane with something she will never be able to get rid of. He was having unprotected sex with a lot of women. And one of those women that Diane had spoken to after finding Padoue's little black book has just discovered she has HIV. And she, of course, was devastated. As is Diane, who is so terrified she may have also contracted the disease that she immediately goes to her doctor to get tested. And what happened? Two days later, she called and said, I'm sorry, it's positive. And my knees hit the floor. And I remember very, very little about those next 24 hours because my, everything just imploded in my head. Diane says she and the other infected woman had each asked Padu if he had HIV or any other sexually transmitted diseases before they even had sex with him. He had told both of us that he was negative. They suspect that Padu not only gave them HIV, but that he also did it knowing full well he was infected. And she said, well, what should we do? I said, I think we should go to the police. But a detective tells Diane and her friend they need more evidence. Could be coincidence, have no way of proving it was him, could be somebody else altogether. But if you find three victims or four victims or five victims, then the prosecutor might take a look at it. It takes Diane and her fellow victims six months to do it, but they tracked down four other women who had contracted HIV after having sex with Purdue and he is charged with assault with a deadly weapon. This was a very unusual case. One of the things that we had to prove was that the defendant in this case knowingly used a deadly weapon, uh, that being the transmission of a deadly disease. Curtis Howard, assistant prosecutor in the case, says the first thing his team did was subpoena Padu's medical records. Doctor's records indicated that he had gone in for HIV testing and that he was determined to be positive and that the doctor had a cons consultation with him in which uh, he was told that he was HIV positive. And through the use of what is known as biogenetic analysis, a forensics medical expert nailed down the other challenge of the case. He was able to determine the direction of transmission. As to, and what that means is he was able to determine that it came from, it started with uh, Philippe Padu and was transmitted to the different ladies. At a sensational and emotionally charged trial, four more women joined Diane and the five other victims to allege Philippe Padu had also given them HIV. He was ultimately convicted and sentenced to 45 years in prison. That's somebody who doesn't care about anybody else. He cares about one person, and that's himself, Philippe Padu. Why do you think Philippe was doing this to all of these women? He is a hound. He is a dog. That's why. But Padu, who has now been behind bars for seven years, remains astoundingly unrepentant, as he insists in our exclusive prison interview that he is not only innocent, but that Diane is the guilty one. 
Where do you think you got HIV from? From Diane. You can sit here today looking at me yes. in my eye. Yes. Tell me that Diane... Absolutely. Padu bases his accusation on the claim that he was diagnosed with having only stage one of the potentially deadly virus, while Diane was diagnosed with stage three. It's virtually impossible for an HIV person who's stage one to infect a person and, and give them stage three. That's a medical fact. Assistant Prosecutor Curtis Howard says Padu is wrong. HIV affects people in different ways, and the way somebody's body responds to it is not indicative of the date of, uh, in which they uh, became infected with the disease. Padu also scoffs at the biogenetic analysis used at his trial to show he was the source of the HIV that infected Diane and the other women who testified against him, calling it junk science. That uh, doesn't mean any standard, uh, scientific standard, forensic standards, for example, state or federal. It proved nothing. It doesn't prove that I'm the one that infected him. It's fraud. It's fraud. Padu further claims, despite what Diane says, they didn't have an exclusive relationship and that she also had other sexual partners while they were together. We were never ex mutually exclusive. So you were not exclusive. So you, you, what you're saying is you had an open relationship to date other people. Diane was bisexual. She admitted being bisexual. She saw other men and other women uh, throughout our, our relationship. Padue also alleges they even went to swingers clubs around the world together. She was involved in the swinger set uh, before I met her. Diane denies his claims that she was bisexual and went to swingers clubs with him and finds Padue's accusation that she was the last source of the HIV literally laughable. <laughs> yeah, uh, he probably didn't tell you about the woman that we found that had been with him and came forward and said, no, I was with him in 1997 and I was diagnosed later on. I asked him to explain how other women he had sex with before he even met Diane also contracted HIV. I feel sorry uh, for what happened, I, 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 for all of us, uh, but I also feel that they should, they, they, they were guilty of sin, I mean. Do you admit that you had unprotected sex with all these women? Yes or no? Yes, but um, that, I mean, that doesn't mean I infected them. Uh, it just means that they, uh, at the time, they were having a lot of partners. One of them, I think, uh, admitted having 10 to 15 partners. Let me ask you this. Do you at all, sitting here today, take any ownership in any of this at all? Well. Of course, I was promiscuous and I didn't use all the right protection. And I wish uh, this hadn't happened to some of these women. I wish we had better common sense and knew more about HIV. But what these women did, they, they, they ended my life. So I wish they burned in hell, basically, and Diane especially, uh, in a dark place in hell, because they lied, they denied, they committed fraud, uh, they perjury. Where was that? But Diane says it's Padue who lied and denied, and she feels the full magnitude of his heartless crime is yet to be known. Do you believe that there are more victims out there? I know for a fact that there are more women. And Assistant Prosecutor Curtis Howard pays tribute to Diane for having the courage to step forward and get some kind of justice for herself and Padue's other victims. She was a very strong woman. She was very strong-willed and she was uh, a big part of why this case was prosecuted. And why other women are now safe from Philippe Padoue.